Yeah, well, uh, coming from uh, the, my previous club that I was in, uh, obviously I was uh, a bit demotivated. I was a bit down because uh, if I remember very well, uh, on my last year at my previous club, I went for a six months loan. So I returned there, and on my return there, uh, I had a chat with my agent, and he told me there's an interest from Supersport. And then I said to him, I mean, I've been here for four years with my previous team, so I think it's a good timing for me to move on. So I think it came at the right time at that moment. I needed a new environment. I needed a, a boost in my career. I needed to revamp my career. So me arriving here, the most interesting thing is that we were in the uh, Kev Confederations uh, last eight. So we played Zesco. So I was included immediately in the team. So that was a huge lift. Apart from joining the team, apart from being here, apart from where I was coming from, mentally, psychologically, but just to be in that team, to be included in the squad, it showed uh, the kind of pedigree that the, the team takes me to have. So it immediately put me through my paces. It immediately gave me a, a huge uh, upliftment that I needed. So I joined the guys and I went with the guys. We beat Zesco. And then we went, we played with um, a club African of Tunisia. We beat them in the semis. And it was an honor for me to even play there and to represent the team and represent the country at the same time with that stage. And we went to play TP Mazembe. I mean, uh, for me, it was a blessing because I would have never had thought in my career that I would play a CAF Confederations Cup or a CAF Champions League uh, Cup final. But I was there and I represented the team very well. We went to Congo, we played Mazembe. So from there on, I thought for me, that's when I believe that uh, things do happen for a reason. Because had I remained in my previous team, I wouldn't have experienced all that. So for me to come here, it was something that was always there in my career and it's something I'll forever cherish. And for me, that's my biggest highlight. Not only being here at Supersport playing that, but in my entire career in the 12 years that I've been playing football, that will always be a standout for me. And the medal that I received, even though it's silver, but I don't think many players will retire with such a medal. So for me, that, that's one outstanding moment in my career and it will always be a highlight of my career. Yeah, um, uh, when I joined the team, like I said, we were in the CAF, we were racing in the CAF. And interestingly enough, we raced in the MCN, we never got knocked out. So we played uh, Chiefs on my first year, if I remember very well. Uh, we beat them in the first round of the MTN8 and then we went on to play Marisbeck the second round which was the semi-final, the first leg and the second leg we beat Marisbeck and then we went to the final with Cape Town City. Eric Tintler was the coach then, uh, our head coach now Kaitano was there as well. Uh, it was an historic moment for me as well because uh, having received that MTN8 uh, medal I received it with my previous team, so I had two finals in the row then. And then I went through to the next final of the MTN8 with Coach Caetano, it was my third final. And then it was two in a row for our team, and then we went three in a row, so I, I've been with the MTN8 finals four in a row. So that's another highlight in my career, and something that I don't say much because I'm waiting for my retirement where I can narrate my story, for now I'm still playing. Uh, but it's one of the achievements that I think a lot of players have achieved in their careers, being in the MTN8 uh, finals four in a row and having won three, one with my previous team and two here at Supersport. So it's been a good chain. For me, it's been a good chain. Yeah, uh, studying uh, was my main uh, priority as a, as a player that came from an academy. I'm from an academy called Rosina City Van Sports School. So at Rosina City Van Sports School, we would study and then football would come later. So they would always emphasize the fact that you need to look at the balance. We make you study first and then you go play your respective sports because it's a sports school. It's not only focused on soccer, it's based on multiple sports. So they used to emphasize the fact that if you don't make it with the second option, this first option should carry you through. So they wanted to make good sports ambassadors and I'm glad I became one because uh, with their philosophy, with their, the type of project that they're running there, they never looked at us holistically. They were just in, uh, interested in that individual that would go further with their studies, or if it come to, uh, to a fortune, then you make it through sports and then so be it. So it happened that I played uh, for Rosina until matric, and then I went on from matric to Valley University of Technology. That's when I chose the sports management diploma course, national diploma. 
I completed the course and an opportunity came for me to play for my first team, Chomo Cosmos. And then from there, I had a national diploma. But at the back of my mind, for the, for the last 10, 12 years that I've been playing football, I always had that thing that that national diploma that I acquired then, it needs to be advanced. It needs to be improved. It needs me to go back to school and say, what's in there? What has changed in terms of the module? What has improved? So it's more of me improving myself after all these years. So the opportunity came this year, Val University of Technology, they introduced advanced sports management, which was known as BTEC, which is your degree level. So I went back and lucky for me, the COVID made it uh, difficult for us to attend classes, physical. So they were, they were done online. So for me, it suited me because I would come to training, after training, then I would go online classes, or if I missed a class, there were recordings that I would um, sort of put myself up to speed with what was going on, what was happening. And with the, with the, with the class, the, the, the group that we had, I had people that I would talk to, my classmates, they were very helpful. In case I missed something, some of them would also update me and say, don't forget there's an assignment due, don't forget the, there's a test coming up, don't forget the, there's this or that. So they were very helpful in that department. And for me to have a team that understands the language and the, and the, and the importance of being in school, they would allow me, sometimes I would leave training early, sometimes in, in, in some camps uh, I, would, I would do presentations when I'm in camp because the time would allow me to do that. Sometimes I would do my typings if the assignment requires more of that typing or more of whatever that was needed, the editing and that before I submit. So I was in a team that understood that I was in a school and I needed to submit, I needed to write. And at some stage, I remember one time, I had to write law, but we were playing on that day, sports law. So Dominic um, uh, and then my agent, Lynn, uh, Mr. Paul Matthews, not to forget to mention him, they made it a point that I have the letter that was gonna be sent to the lecture and the lecture understood and I was given a special test. So for me, it was a perfect timing coming from a national diploma that I acquired in 2011 cannot go and apply with that now. I think it wouldn't, it wouldn't even give me a, a step in, in, in a door in any, in any corporate because when I get there, they're looking at the experience. I don't even have the experience. So for me to go back to school is just to upgrade myself and prepare myself for after football. And the corporate world doesn't say you are playing for super sport, therefore we'll take you in. That, that comes for nothing in the corporate world or in, in any department, in any project that, that, that people uh, take their investments, they take their money serious and they pay people, they need people who are qualified. So I have to be qualified to be in that space and think like a qualified person and use my skills then and learn as much as I can like I did all the years in football. And for me, the equipment of education, they didn't have to take a second priority but the first at this point. Uh, for me, I think playing professional and studying would have been a challenge uh, back then because I wouldn't have had the experience to juggle. Uh, now I think it came at the right time. What do I mean by that? By that, uh, I mean 12 years of playing professional football. You know the schedule, you know the sessions, you know the toughness of uh, the preseason. That's the, the most difficult uh, time of, of, of our years, footballers coming back from holidays or coming back from two weeks or six weeks rest, uh, coming into the preseason. So my advice to the players would be, take those years as a learning curve. And within those, le within those years, you will find the balance. You will have to find the balance because it's all about the willingness. If you're willing to do it, if you want to do it, you'll find the balance. But don't immediately wanna take off your football career and then you wanna plan the schooling. Uh, for me, you already have something that's going on, which is your football career. It will come a time where your football career years are declining, you, you're on your retirement years. I think that's the perfect timing for me. So for me, I think it worked out because not that I'm on my retirement years, but I can find a balance now. I know how to rest, I know how to go back home, and I know the hours between from coming from training and all the way up until at night and all the way up until the next morning session. So I thought for me, there's a huge gap. I mean, for any footballer, they have to think about it. There's a huge gap. We, we start training at about 9 to 11, some teams, some teams, 8 to 10. And then from 11 up until 11 at night or up until 10 o'clock at night, what are you doing? Yes, there's gym, there's physios, there's all that to improve ourselves as prof professional athletes. But if you're not doing that, you cannot rely on watching series. You cannot rely on playing FIFA. You cannot rely on being at the malls. You cannot rely on the fact that 
your agent has to come through and say to you, okay, invest your money here and then you just sit here. Upgrade yourself because at the end of the day, with all that investment that you have or that you're doing whilst you're still playing, you will need a basic salary. You cannot take that investment of the football and think you're going to survive from it. The basic salary comes from you being a, 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 a responsible citizen in, in, the, in the nation, in the country, and a responsible citizen is somebody that wakes up and goes and works at, a, at any department or any platform and make sure that he earns a living to maintain the standard of living. So you have to find a gap. After training, my advice to the youngsters, to anyone, you have to find a gap. Even if you don't go to a varsity, go to a college, go to short courses, but you have to find a gap, and the gap is there. And get people around you to help you. People are there. People are always there to help you. In my in my situation, but the other thing that helped me with our our sports director, Mr. Kovas, uh, fitness director, he is a lecturer at uh, Sony University of Technology. We've got uh, Mr. Bafana Sikhali, who is a physiotherapist, who is a former lecturer at the University of Pretoria. We've got uh, Bertha, who is our, who is our masseur, who is also just graduated in a short course of sports and exercise. We've got uh, Ket, who is our, who's our GPS guy. He's also from a background of schooling. We've got uh, Innocent um, Kunu, our warm-up and fitness guy as well, who is also a has a background of uh, a BTEC in, 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 at Sony University of Chicago. So the help is always around you. We've got uh, our background staff, we've got uh, guys like uh, Brian, we've got guys like Coltrane, we've got guys like Matt. All those people, they, they qualified in their respective forms. So you bring all those aspects, surely you're going to get help. Surely. There is always help. And whilst you're still playing, they, they, they should be help. Because once you're done playing, help is not as easily accessible as you still play you know you've got institutions where you've got the chairman the ceo you've got your agent you've got people that can say here is funding go to school so i think you can just utilize that whilst you're still playing because once you're done playing a lot of things don't happen like when you still play so for me my advice is for them to to look at the channels and use the channels because they are there the channels are there and uh so just to mention the the south Pool, the south african football players union they also have funding for, 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 for any player that wants to go back to school, you can use that's another channel. So they pay like 20% of your of your course and then you pay 80%. I mean, that, 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 that doesn't come cheap. They are chipping in, so players need to use that. Yeah, I think we, 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 we all channeled into coaching as players. When I say we, myself included, I once thought like, I would, I, would, I, would, I would want to pursue coaching because we want to plow back. It's because we, the, we have the passion for the game. I once thought, if not coaching, but I need to be involved in the game, analysis or pundit. Uh, I thought along those lines, but I'm thinking, why are we all thinking that we're not good enough for the office? I mean, we need administrators. We need people who've played the game. We need people who are going to improve from when I was still playing. Things cannot be the same. From when I'm playing now, there are challenges. I'm not saying challenges will be over when I'm done playing. But I can at least better those challenges then when I start sorting out the challenges that are facing us now. So I think being at the office for me would, would be a huge boost for, for the players and for the game itself. No matter what, 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 what uh, uh, organization I'm in, no matter the league, no matter the, the division, can be even in the lower divisions or even at school level, I'm prepared to go and say these are the challenges that we're facing. And for me, my biggest challenge is that why do we have to neglect school as footballers? and pursue football, whilst the rugby players, they're in the national team, they're at varsity. You get doctors who are rugby players, you get engineers who are rugby players, cricketers, they never neglect school. The schooling in cricket is taken seriously. You get to netball, netball you get girls who are at UP, you get girls that are CUP, all these uh, schools that you can think of, the major varsities, you get them. You get netballers, you get cricketers, you get, uh, like I said, the rugby players, where are we as footballers? And Come to think of it, footballers were at the risk I mean, of high employment rate, were at the risk. The moment you, you're done with your career or the moment you no longer have a team, most of us, our contract finishes at June. July, where are you going to get income? I mean, if you go around, there's about maybe plus minus 3,000 players in this division alone, Premier League. Ask how many players have a CV. A CV. Just a CV. And the CV is updated. CVs are what gets you through. Yes, people can, uh, can argue and say, I've been sending CVs, I'm not getting a job. But 
it's what you need. It's one, it's one of the requirements that you need. You cannot just go somewhere and, and knock and say, I'm looking for a job. You need that. And there are a lot, lot of people that can attest to the fact that I sent my CV through and I came in for an interview and I'm working at this company. It's been so many, so many years. So those channels are there, but you need the paper. You need the requirement. So for me, I think at the office right up there, we need somebody who's going to channel the academy boys. We need somebody who's going to channel even professionals to say, Hey guys, don't forget register for courses. Don't forget upgrade yourselves so that when you're done with football, there's a basic income that comes, and we are responsible citizens. And people look at us uh, on a different level than they're looking at us, and and then saying so be stories about us. So for me, I have to be in the administration and and channel this education uh, department through football. Well, the most interesting subject for me uh, with the course that I just did uh, was the recreation. Uh, funny enough, when you think recreation, you're thinking just sitting at the park, because that's what we are accustomed to, that's what we grow up to know, that recreation is going to the park or going for a swimming or just doing something that you would call a hobby. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, it comes to me and it comes as my topic in research that the elderly people are, are being neglected, they're being forgotten. And us, as a sports management student or as, uh, as students who are involved in event planning or in creation, we need to come up with programs for elderly. The elderly people are not dead. They cannot just wake up and sit in a couch and watch TV and do that. And until on Sunday they go to church and come back. If they can go to church for me, that means they're still active. They're active enough to be in a community center, in a community hall, where we can come in, implement programs for them, and make sure that we take the, the elderly are taken care of. And you know what? In return, if an adult stays with kids and then they go through programs that we'll be presenting to them, they can then understand our world. They can then be modernized as to what challenges us as their grandkids, as to what, how they can support us as people who have traveled, people who have gone through uh, hardships in life. They can easily help us because now they can see, good, okay, this is the major challenge that these kids are facing. But they won't know that from sitting and watching TV because they don't even watch programs that are going to educate them as to what are we struggling about uh, in, the, in the modern world. So I think that one aspect that I would like to take forward into black communities, white communities, any community, no matter what race, so that we know that the elderly people cannot just sit there and wait to die. They need to be active and they need to be taken care of so that they can raise us uh, as parents and raise us so that we can raise our kids as well and their grandkids as well. Studying, I have to continue. Studying never stops. For me, studying, I have to continue. I mean, for me to get to a, a platform of a doctorate doesn't mean now I'm at a level where I can look down on people. Studying humbles you. Studying makes you think uh, differently from people, makes you look at the world in a, in a better way, makes you as well want to be involved in helping others. Because if, if you don't study, you don't know that the next person needs a buzzer. The next person in your family needs that money to register. The next person that you can help, even in your team, to say, boy, come, join in this course, I can help you. But you can only do that if you've gone to school, if you've known the hardships of studying. So for me, studying will never stop. And I think, for me, one day, to have a player who will represent us in the PSL committee, it will be huge. You look at the PSL committee, I've never seen a soccer player there in the PSL committee. You look at the SAFA, I've never seen, okay, now we have a vice president of somebody who just played. I mean, Eto has just been... Uh, nominated or has been selected uh, the, the president of Cameroon uh, Federation. When are we going to have that in South Africa? I mean, Kalusha was there in Zambia. So we need progress in terms of how do we study to get to those platforms. So for me, I don't think I'll stop now and I don't think I can limit myself. If anybody comes up to me and says, why don't you try this? If it's for the benefit of the generation coming behind me or if it's for the benefit of me thinking and seeing the world differently, definitely I will study.